Hey guys, I'm Nana, your English language teacher, and I'm here to help you to make your language level advanced. I will help you to concentrate on B1 and B2 levels and to sound like a native. Uh, today we will concentrate on the grammar. Don't be stressful, everything is okay. So saying grammar, it doesn't mean that it should be like difficult, okay? I'm here to help you to explain everything as simple as possible. Okay, so today we'll concentrate on present perfect tense. Before explaining everything, I want to say that in general, perfect tenses are very typical to advanced level, okay? Of course, you can use like present simple, past simple, yep, no problem, but it is like more um, simple, okay? If you want to sound more academic, and more, f not formal, but like native, okay? So in that case, uh, you need to use some perfect tenses. And by the way, these perfect tenses also can help you to make your speech like sound rich, okay? Well, uh, as you can see today, we will talk about present perfect tense. Uh, before speaking about the usage, uh, the example, so on, so on, I want to first of all concentrate on a form of it, okay? The structure of present perfect tense. Let's write everything and after writing, I will explain detail by detail. Well, guys, you can see now the structure of positive uh, present perfect uh, tense. What we have here? Do you remember are you, we, they, he, she, it? Of course you do. It's so simple. These are our subjects, okay? So basically the structure is subjects plus have, either has, and plus past participle. What is past participle? This is the third form of the verb. In English, we have two types of verbs, irregular verbs and regular verbs, right? Yep. So, if our verb is irregular, for example, mm, let's have build. The third form of build will be built. Okay. So, if I want to form the present perfect tense using the verb build, I need to say, for example, I have built. Build, built, built. So, I have built not I have built. So this is wrong version. This is the right version. Okay? What if our verb is not irregular? This is regular. Okay, for example, work. Okay? Well, um, so what should I do in this case? In this case, I'm going to add ed at the end of the verb. So it will be basically worked okay so i can say i have not work but i have worked so this is the wrong version and this is the right version okay yeah let's move on then we have has so we need to remember that we can use has only with he she and it, okay? This is the rule and we need to follow, we must follow it. Uh, well, so I never can say I has worked. This is wrong version to say. I need to say I have worked or she has worked or she has built. So what we need to remember here that we can use have with subject such as I, you, we, they. And we can use has with he, she, it. And plus past participle, which is the third form of the verb. Okay? Well, this is all about the positive. Now let's go to the negative. Well, now let's concentrate on the negative. Okay? How we can form negative form, negative structure. So what we need to use here is the not. Uh, with have and the same is about has, okay? So I can say I have not plus past participle, which you know, which is already the third form of the verb, okay? And with he or she or it, I need to use has not, again, plus uh, past participle. Let's have an example. Mm, for example, mm, cook, okay? For example, I have not it will be 
So cook, because cook is regular verb. The right version will be cooked. Okay. Yep. So this is wrong. This is right. Okay. So it will be, I have not cooked, for example, the cake. Okay. And you may ask me like, what's the difference between have not and haven't? Uh, actually, there is no like big difference between these two, but the like slight difference is that when I say I have not cooked, it means I want to emphasize the negativity. Okay. The same is about has not. She has not cooked. She has not built. Uh, in the case of haven't and hasn't, it's just simple. Okay. I haven't cooked. I haven't worked. So on and so on. Uh, but when I use not separately with have and has, uh, I have not, she has not, I want to put emphasis on the negativity, okay? This is it. I think it's clear. If you have questions, uh, your questions are welcome. You can write down. I will definitely answer them. Let's move on to the question. Now let's concentrate on a question. So how we can form a question and how we can ask a question, okay? Well, uh, this is common logic in English that we need to use some or we need to put some auxiliary before the subject. And this is not an exception. So here uh, we are going to put our have and has at the beginning of the sentence in the case of before the subject. So it will be have I, have you, have we, have they, so on. Okay, so the example will be like have I. Do you remember the pr previous example, like worked? Okay, uh, so which is the third form of the verb. So have I worked? Okay. Have I worked? And important thing is that if you are asking question, never forget about the question mark, which is very important when you form a question. Okay, so have I worked? Have you worked? Have we worked? Have they worked? So on. The same is about here, okay? Here, we mustn't use have. We need to use has, okay? Has he worked? Has she worked? And has it worked? Well, this is all about present perfect question. Uh, now let's move on to the usage of present perfect. I mean, right now I will speak about in which cases, in which situation we need to use and we uh, and it's necessary to use present perfect tense. Well, guys, now let's concentrate on the usage of present perfect tense. Okay, as you can see, we have two cases when we two main cases, let's say, when we can use present perfect tense. First one is action in the past result in the present, okay? Or in other words, we can say what happened in the past is true now. Uh, we can use present perfect tense when uh, your action is finished and you can see clearly the result right now, okay? Uh, well, now please look at the examples. What kind of examples we have here is first one, I have lost my laptop, okay? Let's uh, first of all highlight the present perfect structure form which is have and lost, okay? So have and lost, which is the third form of lose, okay? Lose, lost, lost. Okay, let's do like this. Uh-huh. Uh, I have lost my laptop. Now let's analyze this sentence. Um, okay, uh, I had laptop, I have lost it. And the result is that right now I don't have any laptop. I I don't have it. Okay, good. Let's go to the second one. She has cleaned her shoes. So structure is has cleaned. Okay, has and plus again past participle. Uh, what is the second case? So we can use present perfect tense when we want to talk about finished action in the past, of course, because it's finished action, but the period continues up to now. Let's look at the examples and you will understand it fully, okay? For example, I have gone to the beach this year. Let's first of all understand and highlight the structure. Have gone, okay? Gone is irregular verb. Go, went, gone. This is the third form of the irregular verb go. Okay, I have gone to the beach this year. Uh, 
let me highlight this one as well. Okay, what do we have here? I have gone to the beach, okay? So I went. This action, this one, is finished completely. And this year helps us to understand that action is finished, but not the period, okay? We still live in 2023, okay? So this year is not finished, but my action is finished. Okay, next one. He has had breakfast this morning. Let's highlight the structure. Has, had. Had is the third form of irregular verb. Have, had, had. Breakfast this morning. Of course, this morning helps us to understand that the action is finished. Okay, but not the period. Well, this is it. This is all about the usage of present perfect tense. Okay, now let's go to the keywords or uh, we can say signal words, which can help us to understand that this is about present perfect tense or which can help us to form right present perfect tense. Well, guys, now let's concentrate on the keywords or signal words, as I said. Okay, let's uh, read uh, like each example and based on each example, I will explain each keyword, okay? So, first one. I have already done my homework. First of all, let's find the present perfect structure, which is have and done, okay? Have you know, it's typical to perfect tense, present perfect tense, and done, which is the third form of do. Do, did, done, okay? Aha. Uh -huh. And what is our keyword? Our keyword is already, okay? I have already done my homework, okay? I finished my homework and the result is that my homework is finished. I don't, ha I don't have any homework to do, okay? Well, let's go to the second one. I have just arrived home. Again, structure, have, arrived, which is regular verb, okay, mm -hmm. uh, and let's find the um, keyword, okay, what is the keyword here? This is a just, okay, yeah. let's go to the third one, I have worked as a programmer for three years, again, let's find a structure, have worked, and now let's see what is our like keyword, okay? I have worked as a programmer for three years. So four plus some number, some duration uh, is our keyword, okay? When we use for, we want to show how long we did that, okay? Uh, in this case, we want to show how long I have worked uh, as a programmer or as a teacher or as a doctor, okay? Next one, I have worked as a programmer since June. Okay, again, let's find a structure, which is have and worked. Okay, and what is our keyword? Of course, our keyword is since. Well, what is the difference between for and since? Uh, since is point in time, that is to say, when our action started. Okay, in this case, I have worked as a programmer since June. That is to say, I started to work as a programmer like from June till now. Next one. The movie has not started yet. Okay, let's find the structure, which is has not started. Okay, and the keyword is, of course, yet. Uh, one important thing about yet a uh, yet is a very typical keyword for perfect tenses, and yet is used only when our sentence is negative or question, okay? And in this case, we have a negative question, as you can see, and has not is separated, well, um, and in this case, I want to emphasize the negativity of the word, that the movie has not started yet, and it's bad that, it's, it, that it is not started. Well, guys, now let's look at the next uh, example. Have you ever been in Pixar Academy? Okay, well, uh, let's find the structure, which is have and been. Uh, been is the third form of the verb. Be was where been, okay? Uh, and let's find out the keyword. 
Mm -hmm. Okay, well, I don't think the keyword can be like Pixar Academy, no. Keyword can be you as well and in as well, so the keyword is ever, okay? So ever is the keyword of present perfect tense, okay? Let's look at the next example. He has never been in Paris. Uh, what is the structure? Structure is has and been. Again, the same, okay? Uh-huh. Now let's find out the keyword, and the keyword is, of course, never. Okay. Uh, in the case of ever and never, I want to show my past life, okay, till now. Good. Next one. How long have you worked in Google or Google company? Okay. So the structure is have worked. Of course, question mark is important because it's a question. Okay, and let's see what is our um, keyword. The keyword is not, of course, Google. The keyword is not you, it's not in. So the keyword is how long. Again, okay, I want to see how long. Uh, I want to see the period that the person is working or like have worked for the company or in the company, okay? How long have you worked in Google? Well, guys, this is all about present perfect tense. This is all about the keywords or signal words. Uh, and also your assignment, I would like to assign you to write five uh, different sentences. Some of them can be questions, some of them can be negative or positive, just to practice what you uh, understood and what you have learned, okay, as a result of the lesson. I hope you enjoy it. Um, see you. Bye.